Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, remembering once again that the 13 things are E, I, meaning the imaginary number, pi, minus 1, 0, 1, the square root of 2, the square root of 3, the square root of 5, the golden ratio, phi, infinity, a matrix A, if you would, a vector x, 13 things. And what we're going to talk about quickly today is one of the things that comes from this is the unit circle. And we're going to look real quickly here how we apply it and why we learn it. And it's not tough to learn when you realize how often you will use it. I'm going to draw a circle here with a radius of 1. And I'm going to divide that first quadrant in half, knowing that this point and this point are at 30 degrees or 60 degrees. I'm going to come halfway in between, knowing that that point is at 45 degrees and halfway in between here, knowing that point is at 15 degrees. All kinds of different ways to learn this, but we're going to go ahead and just make a table on the side here. And we'll go ahead going from an angle of 0 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90. And we're going to now then look at what the x coordinate and the y coordinate on these circles are, starting just with these middle three, the idea of over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2, over 2. I'm going to fix that a little bit here edit cut so I'm gonna go back to the Y being over 2 over 2 over 2 and then remembering going this one the X is a half so 1 2 3 and this one the Y is a half 1 2 3 square roots on the top remembering the square root of 1 is 1 square root of 1 is 1 square roots on the top, you now have the coordinates or what would also be known as the cosine and the sine at 30, 45, and 60 degrees. Lots of other ways to get this, but remembering at 15 degrees the x is more than the y and remembering the pattern 2, 4, 6 with square roots and 2, 4, Sorry, edit, undo, edit, undo, two, four, six, with square roots and a minus. And then realizing from this pattern, zero, of course, x is one and y is zero. And for 90 degrees, x is zero and y is one. And then this pattern then shifts when you get on the other side of something called the line of symmetry at 45 degrees, you have these numbers are reversed just like these numbers are reversed above you. I'm going to put a really close equivalent here now for the x and the y is going to be I won't do that. I'm just going to make it 2, 4, 6 square roots with a minus in between 2, 4, 6 square roots with a plus in between and then you start making sense that you know this works. Very quickly you also tend to learn the tangent but the reason why we're learning these today is so we can now talk about why and how we multiply matrices. I am going to do it purely on a 2D plane which I think is one of the problems is keeping people locked into 2D but we're going to go ahead and talk about how we do coordinate rotation on a 2D plane. I have a point right here in space. I'll make it 2 and 1 and I want to rotate it some degree, some angle. If I would, I want to rotate it at an angle theta. Let's say we're going to rotate that 30 degrees. How do we go about doing it? We do it with a linear transformation being a rotation matrix. First, we remember that the coordinates that we've learned in math, this is 2 comma 1. We learned that in real math, if you want to call it that, we deal with that as a vector, the end of a pointer, 2 in the x and 1 in the y. 
we now are going to transform that by a rotation matrix. That rotation matrix looks something like this. This is your vector, 2 and 1. That rotation looks something like this. The cosine of say of theta minus the sine of theta and the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. And so if you're going to multiply, let's say we're going to rotate that point, rotate the point or the set of points, let's say we're going to rotate it 30 degrees or very important to very quickly often talk about or pi over 6. How are you going to do that? You're going to fill in the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half and of course you have the minus 1 half here. And the sine is still 1 half and the cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. You're going to multiply that transformation, that rotation matrix, by 2 and 1. And you're going to come up with the coordinates of where that point is going to be, which you could do with your protractor as well, or a compass. So following up on the previous video, which is the two different ways to multiply this, we're going to really think about multiplying 2 times the first column plus 1 times the second column. And we're going to end up with a number that will fall off the page. 2 times the first column would be the square root of 3, right, and 1 down here. 2 times the square root of 3 over 2 is the square root of 3, and 2 times 1 half is 2, is 1. And then we're going to multiply 1 times the second column. This is going to be minus 1 half, and we're going to multiply 1 times, so this would be plus, the square root of 3 over 2. And so we now have a coordinate for where this point will be. Realistically, at this point, one might start struggling to know what things are. And this is where, in effect, at some point, you very quickly start to learn what these values are. Right, and you'll soon enough know that the square root of 3 is 2 times 0.866. Believe it or not, you'll know that. Um, so we can go ahead and calculate this as 2 times 0.866. I'm grabbing a calculator, which I shouldn't do. 0 0.866 times 2 is 1.7. You'll also learn other ways to do the square root of 2. So you have 1.7 minus 1 half is going to be, so this is going to equal 1.7 minus 0 0.5 is 1.2. And this is going to be, remember this one is 0.866. It's 1.866. Hopefully this is correct. What is your proof? The magnitude of the length of this one here is going to be the square root of 5. And if you do the same thing here, you'll end up with the magnitude being the square root of 5. Lots of different ways that you can go about doing that. But basically, you learn that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is true, but so limiting, it's scary. But we'll go ahead and try that now, that we should know that. 1.2, hitting my calculator here, 1.2 squared plus 1.866 squared is equal to pretty much 5. So we know that the distance would be square root of 5. That's a quick reason why you learn these pretty quickly. Learn them by rote, so when you do stuff like this, and wrote eventually means knowing that what these values are. And I will go ahead and put those down as I try to just kind of throw some things up here um, and then link you out to who else is out on the web doing this. It's not me. Uh, this is in, partly in response to this re response from Sal Khan to the, the masses shooting at him when he says, well, then why don't you just do it? So if we look at this 
x and y now in a decimal format for 0, 15, 30, 45. And I'll just do those. 0, x is 1, y is 0. For x, it's 0 0.9659, which is in fact the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4, and 0 0.2588. 30, this is 0 0.866, which many people know from any calculation when they do it, and then this is 0 0.5, and this is 0 0.7071 and 0.7071. Once you know these values, then the 60, the 75, and the 90 are just these things flipped. Flipped, and then flipped, and then flipped, which you know, of course, will be 0 in the x, 1 in the y. In this case, it's 0 0.2588 and 0 0.9659. And this one flipped is 0 0.5 and 0 0.866. Somehow it becomes easier when you get going on these matrices to keep track of these numbers than all those radicals. But that's coming from a radical. Thanks for listening. We'll clean this up and let you go ahead and start doing it in what I will almost always, always do, which is putting this embedded in a 4 by 4 matrix multiplied by a 4 by 1 being x, y, z, and a 1 scalar multiplier. Thanks for listening.